ShireSociety.com. Join up and move to New Hampshire for more freedom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call the media to a close. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, before we scoop the media out, uh, let's at the very least introduce to you folks uh, Senator Rand Paul. All right, so that's me and most of the other press getting unceremoniously ejected from a Rand Paul event at Londonderry. I don't even remember why. Uh, Paul was such a disappointment that, well, a disappointment as a presidential candidate, that uh, I like to say I was more of a Rand, Rand Paul supporter than Rand Paul was. He didn't, even, he didn't even last until the New Hampshire primary dropped out, despite some successes. But whether he kicked us out or not, he doesn't necessarily deserve to be kicked. And when was the last time that you heard someone put a senator in the hospital with possibly life-threatening injuries and they're out on bail within three days? $7,500 bail or 5000 depending on who you ask. Has that ever happened in the United States? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And thank you, uh, Jim. Yes. I was loyal enough to this flawed character to go out and vote for him after he dropped out of the presidential race. I lasted longer than he did, but now I really hope he lasts longer than I do. Deciding halfway through the debate what to do. He's the closest thing we've got in the Senate to some kind of voice for limited government. And I wonder if that has anything to do with the lenient treatment of his assailant who appears to be a pretty open and shut case socialist freak. There's his Facebook page to this effect. There's his uh, there, there's a, a series of different claims that seem to sort of back each other up. You know, that the two had arguments about health care uh, policy, you know, in the neighborhood where they both lived. Uh, Paul was assaulted at his house. That's, 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 that's important, right? Like, like that says that no matter whatever, whatever else Dr. Paul might have gotten, gotten wrong, I don't care if he, he, I don't care if he boffed, boffed that guy's wife. Uh, the assault occurred on Rand Paul's territory. The location of a thing says 90 to 95 percent generally about who's in the right. Right? For instance, yeah, the Vietnam War, the fact that it was happening in Vietnam and the Americans were fighting it, well, that was an indication the Americans were wrong. It's the same way when you're on someone else's turf. Even if the end result is, is you getting your butt kicked, it, it's, it's still a, a good possibility that you're in the wrong just because of the location where the incident occurs. Here's something that was buried uh, in and actually a very good Washington Post report. I'm not saying they should have automatically put it higher, but I tend to generally think this following piece of information tends to get unnecessarily buried in most articles. And that is the fact that this guy, who did he work for? The Army. He was military. Not recently, but he's like, you know, like freaking Tim McVeigh in the military, then goes out and, and uses his skills against the American people. It seems to happen so often, and people don't really... They're much more likely to complain about the person's race, right, than the fact that they were forced to pay for the person's training to help kill them. By the way, the shooter at the Texas massacre that we were just talking about, that's, that's another uh, military guy or former military guy. People are so much quicker to divide uh, attacker and assailant into white and black, or male and female, or right and left, but they're very reluctant to divide the two uh, into non-government and government, or to play up the fact that someone is a government person who goes out and does some terrible thing. Uh, but that's a huge deal. When someone is operating at government expense, that means that you're forced to pay for whatever they did. So in a sense, you whether there was a conspiracy or not, you were forced to help pay for the blowing up of the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City when those ex-military guys did it. Even if they weren't active duty, they'd still received a great deal of help from you when they were. Again, that's why no one should ever be forced to help anyone, basically, unless they did something wrong to deserve being forced. I'm getting off topic, aren't I? 
So while this uh, crazed socialist freak of nature is apparently wandering the streets, uh, a New Hampshireite, uh, Chris Cantwell, is frigging still in jail after months for macing somebody on public property, not private property that belonged to somebody else. He was on frigging public property. I think he even had a permit to be there. It's not even clear if he maced the person he's charged with macing. And why is he in jail? Well, because he has unpopular political opinions. He did no more harm to, to whoever he harmed than, you know, whoever he harmed was fined two hours later. There's a claim of self-defense. It's credible. Chris Cantwell is a jerk, and that's why he's in jail. Now they're putting people in jail and keeping them there for being jerks. While almost murderers go free because the per maybe because the person they attacked was uh you know um, what, what exactly is there to i mean i don't like everything rand paul stands for but my god he's the closest thing there is to sort of a rational lay, laid back you know small government constitutional voice in in congress that that is apparently why people hate him <laughs> If they're going to hate him, they should probably hate him for not being constitutional enough or not being pro-freedom enough. Well, apparently he's pro-freedom enough to be practically undefended by the legal system. Now, having said that, I do still support freeing all prisoners, uh, except the ones that can be kept in confinement without taxpayer expense. So, basically, yes, I, in theory... It, it, Technically, I am in favor of releasing this guy too, the, the, the assailant against Paul. Uh, but I want Chris Cantwell released too, and everyone who's in every jail, unless you can think of a way to pay for it without deputizing your neighbor through taxes. It just it makes so nakedly obvious the complete lack of any sort of... Uh, Equi equitability, I guess, or equality in the way people are sentenced in the United States. It apparently doesn't have anything to do with what you did. A, a deed and sentence have apparently just been completely separated from one another. Oh, and did you know that Paul was... A, talk about an interesting life. Apparently this guy was apparently... Ron, Rand Paul was standing on the field at that baseball game where the other congressman got shot. I remember going to a Ron Paul event, I think in February. Look, I was in Western Herzegovina during the frigging siege of Sarajevo, and I didn't, I didn't see anything that interesting, and I didn't see anything. I mean, I, I, nothing as interesting as either of those events, events, the assault or the, or the shooting. Tell you what. We have been condemned to live in interesting times. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at Shire Society dot com